ego, <laughs> another is called buddhi. Greatest is he and most successful person is he who knows how to establish coordination, you see. What is the function of manas? Because I want to go ahead and talk of the chakras which are important, but for that we need to understand this. Whenever you do something, if something comes in your mind, shall I do it or not? Immediately. That particular faculty which thinks, shall I do it or not? Shall I go this way? There is a crowd. If I go that way, then perhaps that is better. Oh, the grass is wet outside. Perhaps I should not go that way. Oh, well, I will bow down. You see, not my head and just go outside. Who is deciding all this? This is not the faculty of manas, but buddhi. So these four functions have got different duties. Buddhi is considered to be supreme. You see. The way you train your buddhi. But if you train your buddhi well and buddhi is telling your manas to do this and manas says, I don't want to, then nothing is going to happen. So to establish a friendly, loving coordination between different functions of your internal states is very essential. Manas has got two qualities. It functions externally and it functions internally both, one quality. It is importer and exporter. It works both. For this big company of life. And buddhi decides, discriminates, decides and judges, three qualities. Ego preserves. There is only one thing bad in ego, otherwise ego is not bad. Ego does not want to recognize the hub. <laughs> ego wants to say that I am everything. I rotate myself. It is not because of the hub, because of the soul, you see. It tries to separate you from the whole. It always wants to separate you. It has built a boundary around you. It has made a cell in you, for you, and you live in a cell because of ego. It does wonderful work when you function in the external world, but it does not help you when you follow the path of spirituality, when you follow the inner world, when you follow and try to understand the subtler realms of your life within, because it has not been trained. You see. So when you talk of the surrender, when you talk the highest path is path of surrender, enlightenment through surrender, it means not the physical surrender. It does not mean surrendering your home and all the duties. It means surrendering your ego making it aware of the reality within you. When ego is again and again made aware of the existence of what we call how, then that is called surrender. You see. The shortest cut is just to cut your ego and you are there. You see. But how to do it? Through dialogue it is possible. And that dialogue is called contemplation. Now, when you sit down in the morning and evening, I think immediately doing meditation is little bit difficult. You want to concentrate mind, you have power to do it, you have a skill to do it, you know the technique, you know the philosophy, you have a teacher, you have a strength, yet you cannot do it. 
there is something wrong somewhere. You see. You will see that sometimes you are prepared to meditate and you feel great meditative joy and most of the time you don't. Therefore, in the morning and evening, a simple way, few minutes you should spend on this. And there is a one thing that you should write in your prayer and repentance purify the way of soul. Self-realization leads you to the goal. This you should not forget. Here you are not praying to somebody who is outside you. Here means constant awareness. When you are praying, you have to be humble. Being humble means learning to compose yourself. O oh Lord of life, O oh my inner dweller, O oh that who gives me light and I can see, that who gives me power to hear, think, analyze, who gives me power to walk, energy to walk, to do things in the external world. Oh, that center of power within me, let me draw strength directly from you. You are the only source of strength. This way you can pray in your own language. This means constant awareness. Who is praying to whom? You are training your mind and a particular part of your mind that's called your ego. You are making your ego aware of this truth. Otherwise, ego refuses to accept that. If you really want to be humble and want to enjoy life, you will have to turn, train your ego. Now, make a picture in your mind when you do this, when you go enter into dialogue. A few minutes every day. Don't say that you don't have time. You have enough time, ample time. You can curtail, you'll, you can just be aware that many, much of the time you remain very lazy. Oh, I am relaxing. What do you mean by relaxing? <laughs> I want to go somewhere, have my holiday. What do you mean by holiday? Hmm? Holiday does not mean that you should eat or drink whatever you want, whatever you can. Junk food or drink, that's not holiday. You see? So, how to have that dialogue? Few minutes every day, just sit down calmly. If you cannot sit on the floor, sit down on the chair, relaxed chair. And relaxation means not allowing toxins to build. That's, that's the meaning of relaxation. Yeah, if you think that loosening the muscle is called relaxation, that's not good. If you go to the state hospitals and there you examine the patients, everyone is relaxed. <laughs> Yet everyone is crazy. You don't need to learn that relaxation. Relaxation word does not explain the purpose and meaning of relaxation. Relax, relax. Thera all therapists are doing one and the same thing. And they earn enough money. And they think the more you earn enough, you are considered to be a great therapist. Relaxation means learning to breathe well, not allowing to build toxins within yourself. It includes food also, food habits also. It includes bowel movement also. I want to give you a small tip. 